Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the sandbox mode in which we are making our newest vessel. So right now, as a lot of you probably know, we are currently making the Four Gods fleet. The Chaos Gods, Nurgle, Korn, Slanesh, and Zinch, each of which will have at least one vessel. Now the plan is to have each of these quite small, at least not so big that they can do a whole battle themselves, that's the whole point. They are meant to be used together always, and we can tweak the numbers depending on who we're fighting. So today we are building the ship for Nurgle. So this right now doesn't have a name, and since Nurgle is normally depicted as a rather slow god, being rather large and full of pestilence, I thought perhaps the best weapon would be cram cannons. Now we haven't used cram cannons in quite a while, as a main weapon source, so I think this will be very good. I've also got a lot better at making cram in the recent building efforts, and so each of these cram cannons will be significantly better than the ones we have used on the Malal's Will. Now the only problem is that cram cannons are stupidly expensive. They are, in my opinion, a little bit overpriced. Every single section of pallet, uh, pellets, pellets costs a grand total of 70 material. Even the barrels cost quite a bit after a while. It's just not the cheapest thing in the world, especially when you compare how effective they are in comparison to something like advanced cannons, which tend to outdo cram cannons in most situations. Not all situations, but most. So I am having a little bit of difficulty making this cheap enough that spawning in several will be viable, because honestly, they will counter very heavily armoured targets quite well, and nothing else. If the target is fast, if the target has really good shields, or any form of laser defence system, it's going to be very good against this vessel. And again, that's why we need to use every single god in the fleet. I've also got a huge row here of the large cannon simple weapons, since they have been made a little bit better. They now do 15,000 kinetic damage at a really low armor piercing value. So they never really do that much damage because that armor piercing is absolutely terrible. I think it would work against wood. Nope, not even wood, maybe glass. One, I think it needs to be at least double to do 100% damage or something like that. There is an equation, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Either way, we can hurt glass with this thing. But there are loads of them and it's really fun when they fire. So to showcase just how pretty the guns actually are. Yep, with the new update, which has made the explosions from the actual cannons look significantly different. I think it looks absolutely amazing. So of course the concept is this will be very very far back in the battle and will act as a bit of a long range artillery unit focusing solely on the largest of the enemy fleet. I think when this is done it's going to be effective but not worth the cost. But it's going to be so much fun I think it will be completely worth it. Okay, it seems like recoil has been mostly fixed now, not quite perfectly, but it's at least a start. So right now, in its current form, we are already approaching the same cost as the Malal's Will for less than half of the volume. Behold the cost of good cram cannons and metal armour. Still. I do think this is going to be a very, very fun craft to use. Now to make the bridge and decide what we're going to do with the back section. Okay, so it's certainly taking its final form now, and although it's not the most exciting vehicle in the world, I am actually really happy with it. It's simple, it's nice, it's actually quite effective, it has killed some of the other small vessels from the other factions in a few tests, even though 
well, it's not exactly done yet, and it just works, which makes me very happy indeed. Now, what we need to do is add the rest of the bridge. It's going to be a little bit higher than this, probably a fortified room on the top, perhaps with some of the detection system in a static form rather than on the turrets, and then we need to decide on what we're going to do at the back here. Now, sadly, I'm losing a few frames at the moment, and this has been happening all day with From the Depths, so if some of the footage is laggy after here, I do apologize. I have no idea what's going on there. So, ideas about the back section though. Right now, no idea. I do want to avoid adding missiles, so what I'm considering doing is actually adding an anti-missile cannon. This will be the only advanced cannon on the craft, and it will use... This here, the anti-missile cannon controller. I've had limited success with this in the past. It can be pretty good. But I don't think it can actually fire at other cram shells, only missiles. But we do definitely have enough space to make a very reliable advanced cannon using flak or high explosive warheads, which is what this wants. After a good 20 minutes of testing out different types of advanced cannons, some of the ones I've already saved in the past, some far higher gauge weapons and some far lower gauge weapons, I've got to say, I am massively not impressed by the anti-missile cannon controller. It does work, but it does have a tendency to freak out once the missile gets too close, and too close can be up to 300 meters away. So... I don't really know what's going on there. I do have a lot of munition warning systems, everything is set up correctly, and the cannons themselves aren't exactly terrible. The one thing I do have experience with is making this type of cannon, and yeah, it's just not working out for the amount of resources I am currently using, and considering how expensive this craft is already, I don't really want to spend this much on something which will only save me maybe 50% of the time from a missile attack, and seems to be quite vulnerable to being overwhelmed by swarms. So instead, we are going to go with the missile option, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing, because it will mean that the back section here will remain mostly flat, so that we can do some decorating with it. We can have a proper missile si um, silo, we can have it armoured up, and perhaps we could have an opening section, although that will be a little bit more weird with anti-missile missiles, since they're not always going to be firing. So I don't really know if I'm going to do that, but we'll find out very, very soon. Oh yeah, a lot of missiles hit me recently. Can you tell? This craft has so much empty space on the inside, so... Although I was just talking about adding a missile silo here, I still need to add some more armor around the sides as well, which thankfully I can do fairly easily. And I was considering maybe we could just add an additional weapon. And then maybe we could try and hide the missile silo in the bridge itself, since it doesn't actually have any vital components. It's there purely for looks. So we could have one more of the larger cram cannons on the back, and then nothing else. We just have the cram cannon, we separate it from the rest of the craft, we add some additional armor, and everyone is happy. Yeah, I think that may be better, because then, of course, it's also adding an additional weapon. Right now, I don't think this thing really has the firepower I want, which is really a problem right now with almost all of my builds. I don't know why, but I'm suddenly making things way more defensive and way less aggressive than ever before. Now, I know I'm not really supposed to use advanced cannons as a regular weapon on this craft, but... A tiny little flak cannon like that just looks utterly amazing with the new barrel effects, especially when the barrel is actually spinning. So I'm very tempted somewhere on this bridge to have this tiny little flak cannon. It will do practically nothing against anyone we are currently facing, but it will look kind of awesome. The question is, where does it go? I'm thinking perhaps on the back section here, or perhaps on the second level I'm currently building out. One of the two. 
Not quite finished just yet, especially with the internal armor and the bridge itself, but here we are with our newest creation versus the Malal's Will version 2, the finalized version with the lower gauge weapons which do significantly more damage and don't trigger the whole maximum shells thing. So. Who will win? My money is still on the Malal's Will. It's almost double the volume, and although it is made out of wood and with worse cram cannons, it does have some really nasty advanced cannons and a lot of block redundancy, in addition to three engines and just a lot of redundancy that way. The new ship is a little bit top-heavy still. It doesn't have quite the layered armor, and it has nowhere near the redundancy, only having a single steam boiler, and that's actually Actually, that's what's powering the entire thing. It also doesn't have anti-missile missiles, although that won't actually matter in this fight. And I need to start calling them missile interceptors, but I just like calling them anti-missile missiles. It sounds stupid, and I like stupid. Begin. Well, the first volley goes to the new craft, at least, but will it be enough? Oh, whoa, okay, so I was apparently on the Malal's will. The main gun there firing away at the front. Thankfully, it seems like a lot of shots were missed. I do apologize for not exactly the best cameramanship there. So that first shot threw us forwards harshly. Okay, so it knocked out the front cram cannon, which caused a little bit of a minor chain reaction. The advanced cannons, though, are still fine and are now absolutely volleying at the new craft. It's broadsiding a bit weirdly, it should be turning more than that, but I think it may have lost its front rotors, that's why it's doing that, this weird sort of cut. Okay, the cram cannons just cut straight through the middle, never mind then. I think the Malal's will is doomed here. Yep, two damage, the Malal's will has already lost. I love these cram cannons on a side note. Oh no, it does have one of the advanced cannons let never mind. Let's do a rematch, this time with better cameramanship. Yay for layered armor, I suppose. Okay, so this time we're going to start the battle a little bit further away, so that should give a bit more of an advantage to the advanced cannon using Malal's Will. Now, one thing I didn't consider before, so I had to actually go ahead and look at some of the new stats, is the new changes to armor, especially when you consider metal versus wood. Metal did not used to have the 15 armor value, and it used to have less health. Wood, I think, also also got buffed, but nowhere near as extremely. So now, metal armor is way better than wooden armor. It's always been better, but now it's considerably even more so. When I started the campaign, the difference wasn't quite as apparent, and that's why things like the Malal's Will did surprisingly well, because metal just wasn't strong enough to hold up against a lot of attacks. So why not go for the cheaper armor and just spam that instead? More redundancy, but weaker stuff. But now the weakness is so much greater. I do think that spending the same amount, because both of these are now almost the same cost, and having far less, but having a few stacks of regular metal, a little bit of heavy armor in the center, seems to just be better. Maybe. That's my theory, anyway. And so, let's begin round two. Of course, the new craft also has much faster turning turrets because it is using the new maximum size ones rather than the regular size turrets. Okay, this time it seems to be focusing way better on the center, and yeah, the metal is just holding up so ridiculously well. The Malal's Will has already lost a lot of its advanced cannons. There it goes, straight through, chewing through the center. I am actually surprised by how effective those simple cannons are as well. They do destroy wood incredibly well. They're just not very good versus metal. As you might imagine by the absolutely terrible armor penetration value. Okay, one of the ammo storages has just gone up though on the new craft. It is still firing though with four out of five of its weapons. Just about missing there, but thankfully the second volley didn't, taking out a little bit on the inside.
And here's where the redundancy is really helping out on the Malal's will. Just so much to chew through. And with explosion radiuses being limited more so than they state in their stats, you can't really destroy everything, so a lot of the damage of these cram cannons is being wasted. And there we go, Malal's will has been taken out. Let's see the damage though. I am happy to see this thing still floating despite losing its ammo store. Okay, it lost a good chunk of the back turret. It completely lost one of the front turrets, but thankfully the explosion was confined thanks to the different compartments. Also, my mouse is being really weird right now, I do apologise. Um, minimal damage at the back, and yeah, it chewed through two, three layers of armour, but it still had one more layer to go. So, a little bit longer, and I think the AI would have been in danger of the new craft, but overall, very happy with that. And I'm happy to see slower battles like that, a bit more of a slugfest. Well, at this point, I do have to make a bit of a difficult choice. Right now, there are several places in this craft which are essentially just lumps of armour and a few air spaces to combat things like heat. However, we could actually use those for something. And what I'm thinking of, as many of you won't be too surprised by, is torpedoes. Torpedoes are very easy to set up, they are highly effective, and they give a little bit more variety to a craft. I'm not certain if I want that though, but at the same time, I have just built a small cram craft against enemies which will be countering the cram element. So yeah, I'm already building at a massive disadvantage. So I think a couple of torpedoes, one here at the front, one here in the middle, and one here at the end, all of which have some significant space, would just make this craft a little bit more reliable, so I really think it will be worth it. Yeah, I think I've just convinced myself. It won't be the main weapon, in fact it won't even be the secondary weapon, as these large cannons have actually been surprisingly effective, but it will give this thing the ability to combat subs and do a little bit of damage against very heavily armoured opponents, which use the munition laser defence systems. Okay, here we go, a bit of a test fight here between the new vehicle versus the Crossbones, the strongest ship in the Deepwater Guard by a mile and suddenly getting a speed boost from our cram cannons. So I've went ahead, and I've now added the basic detection systems, and I've added the torpedoes, so this is more testing just to make sure everything is working okay. And it does seem to be doing just fine, those two shots were perfect. We, however, have taken just about as much damage. Now, the crossbones is over double the volume of my craft, and I think, yet it is also significantly more expensive, but of course it is made out of wood, and it is from the starter faction. It is, however, absolutely glorious to look at, and very potent. I was actually using this as a vehicle to test the water skimmer on, the laser water skimmer of Zeech. Once again, hitting what I presume was ammo, and throwing it a little bit forwards. It seems like the cram is slightly overestimating where the enemy is going to be, but other than that, everything's working just fine. Seems like a lot of their guns are already offline, uh, two of them are still online. No, three, that one is working as well? Question mark? It seems to want to work, but not quite. Actually, on very similar health pools right now. Yeah, what was up with those two shells? Yeah, clearly overestimating a lot. That was from when, from when we very briefly bounced the enemy upwards. Need to make it far less sensitive. I'm used to using advanced cannons now, which have far faster projectiles, so it's weird trying to sort all these things out for more regular weapons. Oh, that's a cute skull. I didn't even notice that before. Once again, knocking it forwards. Ow. 
And we're pretty much through into the center here. Oh, there is regular metal and heavy armor on the inside. For some reason, I thought it was, like, completely wood. Perhaps that's just me from building the, the original Malal's Will and seeing that ship so much. I've also just realized this entire time I was actually holding one of my cram cannons so it wasn't firing. Yep. I'm both really happy about that and really annoyed at myself, so we was about one-fifth of the firepower down. Even so, all good, the crossbone seems like it it's trying to sink, but it is still made vastly out of wood. But there's just so much mass here, it's so difficult to finish off. It's moments like this which make me really tempted to set up a tournament with viewers submitting ships which would have some sort of limitation like only use cram cannons, only ships, something like that. Because it has been a while since we've seen more regular battles like this which are more waterborne rather than using airships and all that sort of stuff. And there we go, the Crossbones has been finally defeated. Such an amazing vessel. And yeah, definitely the strongest Deepwater Guard by a long shot. And I still love how they've done their bridge. Yeah, but on my bridge, I have a little turret with loads of detection system stuff. So take that. <laughs> oh, you're trying, little gun. You're trying. After looking at the crossbones, I think I may remove this gun. Like I said before, it's there just because I like how it looks. But if we remove that, we could have a second level here to the bridge with glass and everything nice. And then once we make this bit a little bit less blocky, we could sort of combine them, use some more chains, perhaps hang some lovely mainframes off it. I think it would look a lot better and a bit more alive. Right now, though, I am still fairly happy with the vessel. Got our lovely icon of Nurgle here, got a lot more green paint and a lot of chains. So I think it's looking pretty good. It looks pretty basic, pretty simple, but yeah, I am happy with it. I think it's defensive enough as well, lots of heavy armor. We aren't using shields. We are also not using, at the moment, any form of anti-missile or anti-anything systems. We have no shields, no laser munition defense, no missile interceptors. It's just really basic. Now, as much as I would love to stay like that, we do at least need anti-missile systems. Shields, we do need as well, but we could go with the philosophy of we already have enough heavy armor, shields would mean we'd need much more expensive engines, much more expensive engines means that actually using this thing becomes really expensive. One, one of the reasons why the Malal's Will was so successful was because it was just cheap. It's about the same cost as this craft, and it cost almost nothing during the battle. This thing currently is taking less than 60 minerals per minute. Minerals? Materials per minute to actually be in the battle and function fully. Things like the Medrangard, which already cost 500,000 materials, also cost, I think it was just shy of a thousand per minute, making this far more economical. As soon as we start adding shields, the cost goes up, and if we do lose it, then it's just a little bit more annoying in terms of getting this thing up and running again. So I'm really not sure if I will go down the shield route. So for now, I'm afraid I am actually all out of time for today's episode. I did plan to go back into the campaign, but this has taken me a little bit longer than expected. I've had a lot of fun building this, a lot of fun tweaking weapons, and yeah, just overall really happy with it. I've also just noticed that I have forgot to paint this bit. So if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel and most importantly shows that from the depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future in the next episode i will have finished this thing off probably adding missile interceptors and finishing off the bridge and we will start off in the campaign itself i will then of course have also decided if we're going to use shields or not we're definitely not going to use munition laser defenses because they are just so expensive to run but i will definitely think about using shields Thank you for listening to my random waffle, and goodbye.